Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian Boyle from brianboylemusic.com, back with another Pro Tools tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about improving your mix. In the last video, we discussed how to use a spectrum analyzer to help your ears learn from your eyes. Now, a spectrum analyzer, as pictured right here, uh, gives you a snapshot of what your mix looks like at any given moment in time. It will show you exactly which frequencies are present at 1 minute, 32 seconds, and 10 milliseconds. But what a spectrum analyzer cannot do is show you how the frequencies in your mix are distributed over time. To do this, we need to utilize another tool, and this is called a spectrogram. Now before I explain exactly what a spectrogram is or what it does, I want to show you an example of what it looks like. Then we can dive into the specifics of how it works and what we're seeing. So I've got Pro Tools open here. I'm just going to open it up. And this is a, a uh, beat that I made and um, on my master fader, which is taking the audio from all the channels, I have the Isotope Insight plugin and my spectrogram open. So I'm just going to play this beat from the very beginning and you can get an idea of what a mix looks like in a spectrogram. Okay, so that's a spectrogram. So there's a lot going on here, but what we're looking at is basically a spectrum analyzer with an additional variable, um, in this case being time. On the x-axis down here, you can see it's labeled in seconds. This is 0.0, .0 seconds, and this is all the way to 6 seconds. So as we see it rotating, we're seeing a 6-second picture of what the mix looks like you know, in those past 6 seconds. So as I said, the x-axis represents time, while the y-axis represents frequency. And then finally, the height or brightness of the sound represents the volume in decibels. All right, so I want to start by talking about the drums. I've got the kick soloed, and we are going to take a look and a listen. Uh, so the kick is sitting heavily in the low end of the frequency spectrum. Um, you can see that it's very loud, or hear that it's very loud, so in, uh, that re is reflected on the spectrogram as being very bright or very tall. If I go to the lower view, you can see that uh, it's tallest in the lowest, you know, in the lower ends of the frequency spectrum. I'm going to go back to the high view and solo the snare this time. So you can see I dropped the snare in between the kicks. Um, and instead of being more in the low end of the spectrum, uh, it's the snare has a lot of frequency content um, in the mid range and all the way up to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. So you can see that it's living in a different space in your mix or just occupying different frequencies in the spectrum. So the next thing I want to solo is the crash and the ride cymbal and uh, take a look at what areas of the frequency spectrum the crash and the ride occupy. It's going to be mainly from 15,000 hertz uh, all the way down to you know 100. So, um, but you see what it looks like in, in, on the spectrogram. This you're looking at right here is the crash. If I take away the snares and the kick, you can see the ride. 
So there's obviously a lot going on. It's taking up, you know, space all the way up to 20,000 hertz and all the way down to 300. So in a lot of a lot of the space in between. There's your crash, a little louder, a little wider, a uh, little wider frequency range that it's taking up, but it's just a different sound overall. Next, let's add in the shaker. So you can see this sort of grooves in between the, the ride, and it's got a, it's got a nice groove to it, uh, living mostly from 3,000 all the way up to 20,000 hertz. I'm going to bring the hats in next. A little brighter of a sound, a little harder of a tack. Um, you can see that it's it's uh, brighter down here, which is showing us that it's louder. This open hi-hat is holding a lot of frequency content and takes up a lot of space. So when we bring the snare and the kick back into it, you get a picture of what our drums look like. What spaces they're taking up, how they're interacting with each other. All this space in the middle being taken up by the ride cymbals just taking up filling up that space making it feel a little more real so yeah that's basically what your drums are looking like now let's get rid of the drums and start with just the instruments I'm going to start by soloing the bass and we can take a look and a listen so like the kick you can see the bass is very much living in the low end of the frequency spectrum. Also quite loud, because again, this is a hip hop song, which are usually very, very much bass heavy. Um, next, I'm gonna add in the Rhodes. And this is just a nice keyboard. And I, um, <clears throat> I played a chord, I think it was E minor seven, in two different inversions. The first one a little higher than the second one. And if I show you that from the side, you can sort of see what I mean. So you can actually, if you zoom in far enough, you can actually figure out which, you can see the different fundamental frequencies and which notes are being played. You can see there's four notes there. And you can see there's one, two, three, four here as well. So uh, they're just in different inversions and it's the same chord. So let's go back to the front high view. And next we'll bring in the piano, mute the bass. So a very simple, simple piano, but um, if I go to the low view, you can see the dynamics. The, the height difference is the volume difference, which you can hear. Um, it also has a nice little groove and sits and sits above the roads. You can see the roads down here and the piano up here. So they're, in, they're not only contrasting t tones and timbres, but they're also uh, contrasting in, in where they're living in the frequency spectrum so it gives it makes them each clearer because they're not trying to take up the same space uh, next let's take a look at the electric guitar taking up a lot of a lot of frequency space uh, very much mid heavy rhythmic uh, so it's sort of almost along the lines of the drums and because it takes up so much space I'm just gonna mute it for now uh, next, I want to take a look at the strings. I'm going to mute the Rhodes and the piano for now. The strings are very interesting. If you take a look at the side view, this right here is the fundamental frequency. This is the note that we're actually hearing. But you can see it's got all these other things up here, which are um, overtones, which if you get into synthesis, it's basically what makes something sound like something. It's what makes a piano sound like a piano. It's what makes a string, you know, violin sound like a violin. So in this case, you can see the overtones are very, very present. And if I add in the second string above it, you can see how it makes this very cool landscape of overtones. And strings are, strings are really great for filling out a mix for this, this quality. So if you look at the front high view, you can see how much is going is going on there even though it's really two just very simple string lines and then finally I'd like to take a look at the arpeggio which is just a uh, programmed synthesizer and um, it looks pretty cool <laughs> So 
So you can hear it climbing up the scale and you can see it climbing up the scale. And then as it starts to fall again, you can see the fundamental frequencies down here falling. Uh, these little bits that you're seeing up here are the overtones of this particular sound. You can see they're not quite as uh, bright or tall uh, in this sound, uh, which just means that they're not as loud. So in this particular case, those, those quiet overtones are what make this sound so warm and gentle. So now that you've got an idea of what each of the different sounds look like on their own, I'm going to play this mix again with all of the instruments present so you can take a look at the spectrogram and get a better idea of exactly what you're looking at, you know, which instruments you're seeing and where they're living in the frequency spectrum. And again, this is a great tool for improving your mix because it gives you a good idea of where the sounds are living and um, that way you can space things out in your mix and not have two things trying to overlap or compete for the same frequencies. So uh, really great tool and uh, let's take another look and a listen. All right, so there you have it. That is a spectrogram, and that is how to use it. Uh, really great for looking at your mix over time, how your frequencies are distributed. Um, good, great for learning, you know, where certain instruments live within the frequency spectrum, so that you can place them in the right spaces in your mix, and that so you know you don't have two different things competing for uh, the same space. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you did, please visit brianboylemusic.com for more Pro Tools tips and tutorials. If you're interested in signing up for lessons, head on over to Brian Boyle Music and click on the Lessons tab where you can fill out your first, last name, and email address, and I will be in touch. Thanks again for watching, and keep on making music.